here. So I guess before we nurturing our heritage of love and Torah, which reveal your presence to you. Right, because at any given time, mm -hmm. we're not going to make a fortune. So, if this is your normal iPad, um, like, share, I, I'm, right, yeah, this is comfortable. Three chairs. I'm not sure. Right, like, let's just make sure. I don't want to do like the awkward negative. This iPad four is not muted. Yeah. Know. So, um, maybe. Uh, yeah. Maybe it's yeah. 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 So, but you don't need. All okay, so sorry. So if you have something that you want to say, please uh, feel free to join in. Also, just my apology, I, I forgot that uh, we were supposed to be recording this for uh, folks who could not join us. So I, I turned on the recording, but uh, if you're listening on this recording, please accept my apology. I forgot to record at the beginning of our time together, but we're glad you're joining us now and you haven't missed too much and we're glad you're here. So let's all take a deep breath. We're gonna cover our eyes and join together in the Shema. Shema Yisrael Adonai Eloheinu Adonai Hayom Veshinanta ham levanecha, vidibarta bam, vishiftecha bevetecha, ovelechtecha hava derech, ovishochbecha uvekumecha, ukshartam le o dayadecha, vehayula tota fod bain enecha, uchtavtam hamizuzopetecha, Please continue for a moment on your own. Ani Adonai Eloheichem, Asher Hotzeiti Echem, Me Eretz Mitzrayim, Liot Lachem Elohim. Ani Adonai Eloheichem. Umalchu Tov Ratzon Kiblu Alehem Moshev and Yisrael Lechanu Shira B'Simcha Rabav Yamru Hulam. Mi chamocha ba'elim Adonai. Mi chamocha nedar ba'kodesh norat ilot osefele. Malchut ha'ra uvanecha bokeyam lifne Moshe ze elianu v'yamru. Adonai yimloch le'olam va'ed. V'ne'emar kifada Adonai et Yaakov. Uga'alom yad chazak mimenu. Baruch ata Adonai ga'al Yisrael. We come now to the Hashki Venu, the prayer for peace, that we should lie down in peace and awaken to peace and to life. And uh, once again, uh, this C door that I'm looking at, a minion of comfort, has a reflective reading that expresses those themes of the Hashki Venu in the context of mourning. Help us, O oh God, to lie down in peace 
and awaken us with confident trust for tomorrow. Strengthen those who are burdened with sorrow. Grant them patience, courage, and strength. Guide them, O Lord, with your good counsel. Direct them toward the path of serenity. Shield them, we pray, from every enemy, from fear, from anxiety, from despair. Help them to feel protected and sheltered, sustained even in grief by your compassion. Guard them this night and every night, bless them with healing and hope. Help them, O oh Lord, to lie down in peace. Awaken them with confident trust for tomorrow. We're going to take a few moments now for the Amida, the silent prayer. Again, you're welcome to remain seated or stand as you like. I will chant the Chatzik Kaddish and then we'll have a few moments of silence that you may use the traditional words of the Amida or use this as your own time of personal prayer and reflection. Yitgada Adi Yitgada Shemer Abba Yama Divrach Yuritev Yamlich Malchute Tacha Yechonov Yomechon Uvchaye Dacho Beit Yisrael Ba'agala Ba'agala Uvizman Kari Bitmeru Amen Yehei <laughs> <laughs> Oh, say shalom bim ramav. Oh, ya say shalom aleinu. Ve al kol Yisrael. Ve imru, imru, amen. Ya say shalom. Ya say shalom. Shalom Aleinu Ve'alko Yisrael Yase Shalom Yase Shalom Shalom Aleinu Ve'alko Yisrael Yase Shalom Yase Shalom 
Shalom Aleinu Ve'akol Yisrael Yase Shalom Yase Shalom Shalom Aleinu Ve'akol Yisrael Yase Shalom Yase Shalom Shalom Aleinu so we're going to rise now for Alenu and then remain standing for the mourner's Kaddish. At the conclusion of the Kaddish, you're welcome to be seated and then we will open it up for sharing our thoughts and our memories and our anecdotes and stories. Uh, there are, are, are many people here, and of course, I can't see everyone on the same screen, so it's going to be challenging to speak one at a time. So again, I'm recommending that we use the chat. If you're not familiar with the chat feature, see if you can find that at the bottom or at the top right, depending on the device that you're using. So see if you can just take a moment and... Um, find the chat. I'm just putting up a shalom, a greeting to everyone. I, I see some heads shaking. That's good. I'm going to just cruise through the screens here for a minute and uh, raise your hand if there's anyone who is having trouble finding the chat. Uh, I'm gonna. I'm going through my screens. And anyone having trouble finding the chat? Once more, anyone? I'm just looking to see if anyone is having trouble finding the chat. All right, looks like a, it's a tech savvy group. So that'll be good. So we're gonna, Elenu Kadish Yatom. And then we're going to open it up. And if you have something that you'd like to share, put it in the chat and then I'll call on you. Shalo san chalkenu kahem, v'gohor aleinu kechol hamonam. V'anachnu koreim, v'mishtachavim v'modim. L'fri melech, malchei hamlachim, ha-kadosh baruch hu. Shehunu t'shemem v'yosin arasim shemem. Okay, yeah Divra, Hirute, Yamlich, Mahute, Bahayechon, Obiyam Eton, Obahaye, the whole Bay Jisrael, Agala, Obisman, Kori, Yamur, Amen, Yehesh, Me, Rabah, Mevorach, La Ola, Ola Omer Maya, Yet Parach, Fish Tabach, Yet Paar, Yet Roman, Yet Nase. Yet Adar, Yet Aleg, Yet Alal, Shemei Dukudesha, Rechul. Amen. Ba'ila, Minko, Birchata, Vashirata, Tushbachata, Venechamata, 
da amiran biyama biyamru. Amen. Amen. Yehei shlomar rabba min shamaya v'chayim aleinu v'yarko Yisrael biyamru. Amen. Amen. shalom biyamru mab. Hu yaasu shalom. Aleinu v'yarko Yisrael biyamru. Amen. Amen. May the Amen. world makes peace in the highest heights. Bring peace to us and to all of Israel. And we say, Amen. So I'd like to open it up now if anyone has a story about uh, Abby, that this would be an appropriate time to share that. Paul Bentheim, please. Paul, you have the floor. You just have to unmute. Yeah, call everyone. Oh, thank you, Rabbi. Are you able to uh, let me uh, share my screen or not? I think so. Uh, why don't you see? I had you said popping. In the meantime, I'll start. So. Um, Michael would like to share. Pardon me if I'm a bit emotional. Uh, Ed, uh, Ed became a very close friend. Uh, Ed and Anita, I met Ed, I think, uh, 12 years ago when I was still living in Israel. And my wife, Judy, is here. Judy is from Jerusalem. Anyway, I had started uh, my company, Brain Savers. We had uh, developed a all-natural nutritional bar for brain health. And two food scientists in Israel didn't get it right. And then I met a fellow who said, you need to meet Ed Wine. And Ed, he provided me with Ed's phone number, called in Toronto, and that began, began a long uh, friendship and professional relationship. Um, so I don't know, if, can you see my, uh, this book? I can see it. Well, this is Ed's book. It was just published last year, uh, The Brain Boosting Diet. And it's remarkable. I mean, uh, Ed contributed to my book that was published about 10 years ago. Uh, for all of you who enjoy good eating and the science behind uh, brain healthy nutrition, I recommend this. Uh, Judy has, uh, uh, prepared a number of the recipes from the book that were done by uh, Noreen Gillitz, Ed's uh, master chef. Noreen unfortunately died just before the book was released. But anyway, this is a testimony to Ed's wisdom and uh, there was nobody on the face of the earth uh, more generous more wise and more given. And I miss you. Uh, uh, generosity, the willingness to give, that's uh, such a, a, a basic Jewish value. And as we give, so do we receive back. So uh, I'm sure that that was his experience as well. I'm, I'm sure he took great joy and gained as much as you received, uh, he received back. And I wanted to read what uh, Ralph, Ralph, I'm not sure how to say your last name, Ben Mergue. Is that close? Ralph? Ben, ben Mergi. Ben Mergi. <laughs> ben Mergi, yeah. <laughs> yeah, Eddie Wine was a true mensch, the highest compliment really in our tradition. The combination of steadfastness and kindness, always accompanied by a twinkle in his eye, was always a blessing at our Pesach Seder. So you shared Seder together. That's wonderful. He and Anita always welcomed us. Ben, say it again. Murgy, Ben Murgy. Ben Murgy. Into their lives and homes. So, hachnasat orchim, welcoming guests. Again, that is one of those values that goes back to the foundation of our tradition. Uh, Abraham. Abraham and Sarah were known 
to have their tents open on all four sides and to welcome guests. And I often think when I remember someone who is gone, that the best way that we can honor that person's legacy is by renewing our own commitment to the values that were important to them. So this is a really challenging time right now about welcoming guests into our homes because uh, we can't exactly do that. So I would challenge all of the people who are listening here now in Eddie's uh, honor and memory, how can you still be welcoming even at this difficult time when it's not like you can just invite people for Shabbos dinner? You can't. If there's anyone else who would like to speak, please put a note in the chat and we'll, we would love to hear your voice. Yeah, this is Kevin. Um, Thanks, Kevin. I thought I would just share something. First, I want to just thank everybody for being here. This is uh, very meaningful to my family, to us. I know to everybody in Toronto. Um, first of all, thank you all for being here. Um, I shared more. I shared more general reflections at uh, at the service at the funeral on Monday. Um, that unfortunately we were only at remotely. But in any event, I want to share kind of something much more specific tonight. Um, and it's something I a lot of people in this call probably don't know about. It's certainly well known to family, but not necessarily to to friends, and that's um, my dad's King Rehertzi's stories. Um, so when I was young, like really young, like five, six, seven, eight, somewhere in there, um, we, would, we would walk to shul, and on our walks to shul, he had made up this character, King Rehertzi's, and then stories surrounding this character. I mean, and, and they weren't just basic story. These were really well, well-developed characters, really interesting plots, I mean, just really well done. Um, and this is not, I mean, my father was an engineer by training. He was a, he was a science guy. He was not a literary figure, but he came up with this, these characters. And, and these were the stories that he would tell me on my way to shul. And I remember bugging him for years when I was a kid to write these down and to publish them. I don't know if he ever wrote them down. I think he might have, and my mom might still have them. But I do know later on in life, he told those same stories to my kids. And just the other day, and I think it was you, right, Noah? Noah mentioned it the other day, and she, she was now sort of the recipient of these stories. So they've lived on, you know, they've now gone two generations deep. Um, and that's just kind of a memory I'll always have, um, that, that he did this, he made these stories up, sort of to accompany the walk to shul. And it's just a really nice memory, and I'm really glad that he had the opportunity to share it with my kids as well. So sweet, yes. And uh, what a, a legacy for several generations. So uh, Rachel ben Murgy is uh, showing us a, a present that Eddie gave to uh, Rachel, uh, one, of, uh, one Pesach illustrating one of the plagues. Uh, is that the frog? Where did this frog come from? Everybody's favorite plague, the frogs. It's a cricket. It's a grasshopper. Oh, oh, Keenim. <laughs> yeah, name. fantastic. It sounds like Passover was a, a, a major ingathering of the tribe for the family. Well, I just, uh, okay, uh, Michael wants to say something. Michael, please. Can everybody hear me okay? We can hear you perfectly, thank you. That's great. Um, so I'm uh, Uncle Eddie's nephew. Um, some of my earliest memories growing up uh, involve Uncle Eddie. He was just the funnest person to be around. He just lit up your day. Um, he would always throw me up. He had a skylight in his front entrance and he would always throw me up into it. I don't know how he did not have me hit the ceiling, but it was just my highlight. Now I just, 
I actually truly remember running up to him over and over again, just asking for more. <clears throat> um, throughout our lives, I just uh, when Ralph said he had a twinkle in his eye, I think he just had it right on. I mean, uh, Eddie had this kind of zest for life. He was just, you know, uh, even you know up until a couple of years ago, he was just so energetic and just fun to be around and curious. Um, I just really, you, you couldn't help, it was contagious when you're around him. You just wanted to ask questions and become curious. And, and uh, we would always go on adventures. And inevitably, as with things with Eddie, the adventures would just turn into um, <laughs> even more of an adventure. So typically, we would get lost. Or, for example, in Masada, the key would break, and we'd be stranded uh, in the middle of the desert. Um, they're always just amazing fun time. We would always make the best of it and joke around and have a good laugh and tell an amazing story afterwards. And he just really, he, he's, he was a foundational part of my childhood and a wonderful human being. And I was just so lucky to be able to spend the times and, and have the stories and have the memories that I have with him and his wonderful family and he's just going to be missed so much. And I'm just, you know, I, I, to this day, I wish I could just go, he had a ravine right behind his house and, and I, I had the opportunity to live with him for a couple months, him and Anita. And we would go hiking in that ravine and just, you know, you know we wouldn't have to say much. We'd just really enjoy our time walking around, looking around. And it was just, it was such a special moment and I would look forward to those moments. And, uh, yeah, I just want to say thank you to Eddie for everything that he's done. And I want to say thank you to everybody for uh, for being here and showing uh, your love and respect for somebody who truly deserves it. How nice that you had such very special time together, you know, to get to live together and really immerse yourself in the Eddie experience. Quite an experience. <laughs> uh, Marilyn D Zondek wants to, yeah. You know, and we had the privilege of going to uh, Israel, where Eddie was born, and um, we spent time with Eddie and Anita and the Ben Murgis and uh, Eddie's sister and her son, and we traveled through the country. We had a marvelous time when Eddie was a little bit late with the plane, but um, we picked him up and we had a really we had shared pride between us and the wines over the joyous occasion of uh, Eden's Bat Mitzvah and being with our daughter Sharon and Kevin and Dahlia and Eden. It was just absolutely marvelous. Um, and I, I, we had seders with them. You were saying how important Passover seems to be when they would be in Arizona. And I remember, I guess it was like two years ago when we had the Hamilton Seder. Eddie, when he, he left the room, he excused himself, and he didn't come back for a few minutes. So we were wondering, Anita, you were wondering, where is Eddie? He was turning himself into Moses. He had a staff and um, like a caftan, and he put on a beard, and he came out. And I mean, our kids, you know, every, everybody enjoyed it, the adults and the kids. And then we saw them this year after his book was published, and... Uh, we met them at Chompy's for breakfast before they went up to Sedona, and he gave us the book, gave us the background. He was so very proud of it. It was selling on Amazon, and I told Anita the other night that in tribute to Eddie, I'm going to look at the book again and get a recipe and make his uh, contribution to the book mm -hmm. in honor and tribute to Eddie. Yeah. Let, let us Drink know how it is. He loves good food. <laughs> oh, there's the That's picture. The picture. <laughs> See him? He's Moses. Oh, with the that's awesome. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Wow. Yeah. So I'd like to go back a little further. I'd like to go back to 1994 yeah. when Sharon was at school in Israel, at Hebrew University. And we told her just a few weeks before the end of her semester in May that we're going up to Toronto because there was a basketball tournament 
the international tournament. And she said to us, boy, I'd like to come also. And it was surprising. She wasn't a huge basketball fan, but she said, <laughs> I've, I made some good friends in Toronto. And we said, sure, we'll get you a ticket. So we went there, we stopped it, we got to the hotel in Toronto. Within 15 minutes, a young man with a bushel of flowers came to our hotel room. His, his name was Kevin Wine, and we had not heard of him the entire year that Sharon was at Hebrew University, but he whisked her off, and a few days after, we had dinner with Eddie and Anita, and Sharon and Kevin, and we hit it off immediately. Um, after dinner, they said, we'd love to show you Toronto, <laughs> our Toronto. And Eddie and Anita took us to see the synagogues. They took us to see the buildings. They even took us to the University of Toronto where Eddie got his PhD, chemical engineering. We thought it was so menschy of them and so warm of them to do that for us because we had no knowledge of them before. <laughs> and we became good friends after that and shared yeah. so much. And Not everybody can say that, you know, they have that kind of friendship relationship with their machatanam. So that mm -hmm. is a, such a blessing. Such a blessing. Absolutely. Uh, so Brian, I want to hear more about Eddie the Loving Liar. And then Daniel wanted to jump in. But first, uh, I, I need to hear more about Eddie the Loving Liar. Yeah, I just learned, I just learned that attribute about Eddie uh, in the last year or so. Um, Eddie and I went to university together in the 60s and bummed through Mexico together. And we were each other's best man at our weddings in 67. And uh, came time for Eddie to be my best man. And I said, Eddie, there's a problem. Uh, traditionally, the best man drives the couple from the wedding ceremony to the reception, and it's on a Saturday. You can't possibly drive us. He said, oh, no, my friend. In my religion, any rule can be broken for a friend, a true friend. I said, really? He said, yes, absolutely. And this is important to you, so it's important to me, so I will drive you to the reception. Wow. And it was um, almost 50 years later, this in the last year, I finally confronted Eddie over the phone and said, Eddie, um, is that true, really? I, I kind of have a doubt that that's embedded in your religion. You were so uh, strict in your observance of it. You, you paid a huge fine when we were flying back from Mexico because you could not fly on a Friday and we were late for registering for our third year because of that. And I think you paid a fine of $300. You've been so strict. I just don't buy it that you got an exemption to drive me to the reception. And he finally, after a pause, said, you're right. I made that up. What a loving thing to do for Eddie, because he was so observant of absolutely everything, which was, I, I found absolutely astounding, and uh, I loved him all the more. Uh, first of all, when he drove us, and even more so when he admitted that he broke a cardinal tenant and uh, did that for us. Thank that's, you. That's a beautiful story. Beautiful, memorable story. Uh, Daniel Bentheim? Hi, uh, can you hear me now? We can. Okay, uh, good. Well, I first want to say that I want to convey my sympathies to Anita and, uh, and Ed's family, his sons and his grandchildren. Um, this came as shocking news to me. My father, Paul Bentheim, spoke uh, just a few minutes ago, notified me. Um, uh, that Ted was very sick and then had passed away and um, I was just incredibly surprised and caught off guard by this and I was lucky to have known Ed and Anita um, through my father Paul and over the last five or six years I'd say since I moved to the U.S. 
um, I got to spend some time with them when they were here in Phoenix. We had uh, dinner together a few times. They were also very gracious and allowed me to stay at their Phoenix apartment for uh, one of the summers I was here. And in general, I was just always um, taken by uh, Edna and Anita's warmth and their openness. And um, it was very nice for me to also uh, get to know uh, one of their sons, Kevin, and his wife, Sharon, and their kids. And uh, I even got to see them all uh, at uh, Eden's Bat Mitzvah in Israel a few years ago. And uh, then got to see them again when Kevin became a judge. And it was nice to really get to know the family and Ed and share some of those special moments with them. So I, uh, again, just wanted to uh, share my sympathies and um, say what a great guy Ed was. And just to thank him and all of you, his family, uh, for inviting me and uh, having me a be a part of your family. It's really been nice. Um, and uh, you will be missed. <laughs> Hashim Felsen. Hey there. Yeah, thanks. Hi, Shim. I, I've lost myself on the Zoom screen, but uh, I'm now looking at Lou Van Delman. And uh, I just want to, first of all, <clears throat> to Anita and Kevin and David, Vivian and I, again, express our condolences and it's a very very uh, it's a very difficult time for Vivian and I also because we just how shall I say we 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 only met Eddie and, and Anita less than 10 years ago nine years ago actually and yet it feels like a lifetime that we've known each other because we've shared many uh close experiences together, personal and family experiences. Uh, and it's been very intense. In the last several years, <clears throat> I've really enjoyed going back to shul because Eddie rejoined the Beth Tikva and he would walk, I would drive. I would al always ask him if he wanted to lift home, but he always refused. Um, sounds like what, what Brian uh, was commenting on. He, he doesn't drive on Shabbos. But... Uh, he was a personal guy, as was mentioned, generous with his time, generous with his, his uh, circumstances. And uh, one of the wonderful things is that despite the fact that we had different points of view on just about everything, we love to spend the time arguing and discussing, I guess is the best word. He loved to discuss with my wife, Vivian, uh, I won't mention politics, but it was a touchy subject for many years. Uh, despite that, despite that, he was a warm, loving, generous, generous guy to, to, to a fault. And if he could help anybody, he'd stand up and say, can I do something for you? What can I do for you? He was very involved with the uh, with the shul in terms of, uh, for uh, you know, if they needed a, somebody to lead a service for uh, saying Kaddish at home, he would go. He offered his services freely. And this book that uh, Paul held up to show us all was a very special, I guess uh, now it's a testament to him and to Noreen who he met through the shul. Uh, and they were, it was, it was like a, a rebirth for him because don't forget he retired he had a job he gave you know he's spent a lot of time in retirement but this was wonderful he jumped at the chance to put something together for uh, and Noreen also they it was a labor of love on both sides and so and I have to say it's, it's a remarkable book and uh, even though I I have one little uh, disagreement about his content, of course, and again, I, I come from a medical background, but uh, I would say 99% of the book was good, actual, factual, and delicious. 
And uh, Anita, Anita, I'm, I like it. And, and Kevin and Gary, uh, and Kevin and David, he, he will be missed tremendously by everybody who knew him. And um, that's all I can say. Plenty. Beautiful, thank you so much. Uh, we're gonna give uh, Sharon an opportunity to share, and I'm not sure who iPad 4 is, but a neighbor saying what a wonderful neighbor Ed was. And that's, you know, having a, a, a good neighbor is so meaningful. I'd like to say something too. Okay, Sharon and then Lou. Okay. Hi, thank you so much everybody for being here with us tonight. We really, really appreciate you taking the time to remember Eddie with us. Um, as his daughter-in-law, I had a unique view into the life of, of Eddie. Um, like like um, Shim was just saying, we came from almost everything from a uh, different point of view. And yet we were always able to, you know, and Shim used the word discuss, we, we were always able to discuss our different points of view um, somewhat animatedly, but always amicably. Um, and we never, you know, held each other's politics against each other. Uh, and in terms of Jewish observance, again, you know, we, uh, we come from a reform family and, and Kevin's father was Orthodox and Kevin grew up in that, um, in, in, in that Orthodoxy. And yet anything that we did Jewishly was always welcomed and celebrated. So if I wanted to sing the short version of the, um, of the Kiddush or, or do, you know, the, the English version of the Hamotzi, he was always happy to participate and never trying to put his ideas of how it should be on us. Well, I mean, maybe he would have liked that, but he was always happy to participate. And when he was in our home, whatever we did Jewishly was, was awesome. And he was thrilled. Um, he was mostly thrilled to watch his grandchildren participating. He was such an amazing grandpa. He was so hands-on. Um, you know, I'll admit that before we had kids, I didn't know what their relationship would be with their grandparents who lived all the way up in Toronto when we were here in Phoenix. But the minute that Eden was born, Eddie and Anita were transformed into Saba and Safta, and they were a constant presence in our children's lives, um, spending so much good quality time. You know, often as parents, we don't want to get down on the floor and play the games, the imaginative play for hours and hours. I remember one time when Eden was a couple of years old, maybe three or four, and he was staying here in our house and she got him to play puppy dog for more than 24 hours where he was <laughs> in character playing with her. It was, he was just really, really present for my children and really interested in their lives and really excited for all of the things that they do. And uh, that, that, that presence will certainly be missed in our lives. So thank you all. It's at, at, at such a beautiful example of uh, non-judgment, you know, being open and accepting and, and the ability to argue and question mm. and entertain different points of view. It, it's fundamental to our tradition and he really exemplified that. Um, Lou, I think we're going to give you the last word because we're winding down on our time together. Uh, mm. Lou Vandelman? Yeah, that's me. That's you. Okay. Thank you very much. I must tell you that I've been listening to everybody's uh, talking about uh, Eddie, and every, everything is true. I didn't uh, know Eddie for that long, but it was long enough for me to know 
that Eddie was the smartest man I ever knew. And I mean that, the smartest man. He knew everything about everything. And if he didn't know it, he would find out what you had to know. I knew him in two different areas. I knew him at Beth Tikva, at our synagogue. I knew him when he was giving a Torah class. I saw him every Saturday walking to shul. I offered him a ride one time and he looked at me and I said, okay, I'm wrong. And I kept on going. And his comments were just unbelievably good. He was a very, very special man. To Anita and the family, I must tell you that when I heard that Ed was gone, I was sick myself. I am sick myself. And I said, I don't understand the workings of the world. Here I am, sick. My wife is in the hospital, and it's us who have to go. But instead, a younger guy who looked terrific, he went. We could not believe it. I still can't believe that he is gone. The second area that I knew, Eddie, was with a group of, of men that met every Thursday. It's called the Romeos. There's no romantic part of it. It's really old men eating out. <laughs> And we enjoyed each other's company. Very rarely do men get together and talk. He spoke to us. He talked to us. We, we discussed with each other. We discussed every problem in the world, from the presidency of Trump to uh, making of paint, to doing everything, writing a book. And he was always in the midst. And everybody, I look at him with a sense of awe. I couldn't get over how one guy could know so much. I'm very thankful that I knew Ed and Ed was in my life somewhere. And he was, because when I was home, when I was in the hospital, he called, he came, he cared. This is what makes a man a mensch. And somebody called him a mensch before. You don't know half of it, really. This guy was something very, very special. And I want to thank you for the opportunity of talking to your family and talking and telling some of the very, very brief moments that I had with him. To Anita, I don't know what to tell you. Honest to goodness, I, have, I don't have the words to tell you how I feel and what I know that you must be feeling. All I can say is that I'm totally story and I'm offering my complete condolences for Anna and myself when I told Anna that Ed Warren died she called me on the phone from the hospital she says did you tell me that Ed Warren died I said yeah she said I didn't think about this I didn't dream it I said no she says oh my god Lou what are you going to do I, I always thought if I have a problem, I would call it me the opportunity of venting a little bit. Thank you and may God bless you all. And please remember Ed for what he really was. Thank you. Thank you, Lou. I can't imagine a more fitting tribute and uh, we all wish you and your wife a healthy, and a sweet new year, a year of fullness and well-being and peace and comfort and strength. And, Thank you. And for all of us. Thank you. And I want to, on behalf of the family, thank everyone for joining us here this evening. I will um, organize the recording of this and get it to Kevin and he can share it with anyone who is not able to be here. But let me be among the first to wish everyone a Shana Tova, um Tukat, You're the first. healthy, You're the first. <laughs> healthy, and a sweet uh, new year, a year of health and well being for all of us. Uh, good Yanta, and thank you all for coming. Thank you. Thank you. Oh.